Hey everyone, and welcome to the first, and probably only, Tech Demo Awards. I recently got my hands on a PS5 for my brother, and in the time between obtaining it and giving it to him, I had enough time to try it after his playroom, and honestly, it kind of inspired me to rank the history of Tech Demo games. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't quite played all of these, or most, but uh, I'll be using the perspectives of others online to uh, rank them. So our ranking's gonna go from five stars to zero, with five stars being a console-defining game that's worth it even if it isn't a pack-in, to zero stars being a game that's not worth playing, and definitely not worth buying. Like Ranch. Uh, now here we're gonna be defining a tech demo, not necessarily as a pre-release demo, but more so as a launch title that shows up what a system can do. Now let's start off with the Nintendo consoles. Now at least here in the West, Gyromite was the NES's big tech demo. It showed off what was both a massive leap in gaming technology and an interesting new gimmick. Now, Gyromite is seen nowadays as kind of a simplistic game, but for one that works with the peripheral like Rob and help kind of save the American video game market, it's definitely worthy of appreciation. Now, because of its contribution to the market and for Rob being adorable, I'm going to give it four stars. Now, if it weren't for Rob delivering salvation to gamer kind, I would probably give it a three, maybe even a two. Just because, like, it's not that good... But for a puzzle game, it's pretty replayable. You'll get, your, you'll get your fair share of hours out of it. Now, things start getting really interesting with the Game Boy. Nothing showed off the Game Boy's capabilities more than Tetris. The Game Boy didn't have all too many gimmicks or even as much power as its competition, but it was capable of simple fun with a long battery life. And the best game to show that off was Tetris. It was the console's pack-in. It's the most iconic puzzle game ever made. I'm going to go so far as to give Tetris five stars. On the SNES, Pilot Wings was a major display of what the SNES can do, and no one cares about it. I mean, it showed what Mode 7 can do, but it was also Pilot Wings. It gets two stars, I guess. For the Game Boy Color, I mean, like, every game on the Game Boy Color shows off, wow, it's in color. I mean, I guess there was, like, everyone's favorite funny Soviet block game, now in more than one color. So... Yeah, I mean, I, if it gets its own rating, I guess we give Tetris DX a 5. Because, I mean, Tetris is Tetris, right? The N64 had Super Mario 64. 5. End of sentence. Uh, it, it's Mario 64. It, it, it is what a 3D game is, you know? It showed everyone what 3D gaming can be. Like, what more do you want me to say? The GBA didn't have a massive tech demo, but Super Mario Advance showed off the system's ability to show SNES-like graphics on the go. Despite that, it's still just the port and one of a kind of mediocre Mario game. I honestly can't give it anything higher than a 2. The GameCube had Luigi's Mansion, which effectively showed off the value of dual analog sticks if a bit later than the PlayStation, but it also showed off the uses for analog triggers. Now, despite that, Luigi's Mansion is a pretty short game, and it left the GameCube in a bit of a content drought until Melee and Pikmin released. Now, ignoring the drought, it does still get a 3 from me. It's not quite as replayable as most of the other really, really great launch titles, but it's still a wonderful experience that shows off what the GameCube can do. However, while it released a couple weeks later, Pikmin was described as the evolution of pre-release tech demo Super Mario 128, and not only showed off the GameCube's capabilities in the same manner as Luigi's Mansion, but also served as Nintendo's way of boasting just how many different models a console could render at once. Now, Pikmin's also a relatively linear game and struggles from many of the same pitfalls as Luigi's Mansion when you consider it as a tech demo. So I'm also going to give it a 3, maybe like a 3.5. Because it's not a perfect tech demo, but it's still a wonderful game. The DS showed off its ability to show off limited 3D graphics, so charming, through Super Mario 64 DS. Now, Nintendo managed to take the 3D gaming experience and make it Hearst compatible. Now, while it does lack an analog stick like the original, the new features it brings still allow it to be a fresh experience for those who play the original, especially given that it's now capable of being played from the comfort of your very own bobsled. I would give this a 5, maybe a 4, but... I'm going to be a little generous and give Super Mario 64 DS a 5. Wii Sports. I don't need to say anything, but I'm going to anyway. Wii Sports is a deeply nostalgic game for me. It sold countless consoles, aided millions in their descent into gaming. I'm only here talking about this stupid nonsense because I played Wii Sports with my parents, my grandparents, my brother, and while Resort did have a wider variety of games, 
The original had a lot more charming simplicity that made it really easy for casual players to get into, and while I may prefer Resort to go back to, I would honestly go so far as to give this game 6 stars. You know what, screw it, this is my show, I can talk about what I want, well, let's talk about Wii Sports Resort. I mean, if you think about it, it was like the tech demo for the Wii Motion Plus, right? So, yeah, this game bangs. Uh, this game bangs hard. I remember being at my great aunt's house when I was a little kid and wondering what this game was. I think that was the very moment my parents actually decided to get a Wii, and I wondered where the swords were in my Wii Sports. But then one day my parents bought me Wii Sports Resort. I was a little older at the time when I first played Wii Sports, so I successfully begun my metamorphosis into the gaming Adonis you see before you today. And I think that while it didn't appeal to as big a casual audience as the original, I also clocked 50 hours into Island Flyover without finding everything. So, yeah, it gets a 5. It's still a wonderful tech demo, but the slightly more complex gameplay that, while from an objective standpoint, may be better... It didn't necessarily appeal to everyone in the same way that Wii Sports did. Now, as for the 3DS, rather than having any specific game, it had its collective suite of built-in applications. Now, we're going to be reviewing all of them as one collective tech demo. So, first off, we've got the one accessory they never cut in new 3DS models, even when the new 3DS cut the charger. Now, I personally remember having a solid bit of fun with the AR cards, even if they were kind of simplistic. I mean, I kind of remember them in the same way I remember Wii Play, in that, like... I feel like if I picked up my AR cards or my copy of Wii Play, my hands would be covered in an inane amount of dust, but I don't know why I remember it that way. It just feels very beige in my memory. Then we've got Street Pass Me Plaza. This went hard. Now, I think it's better with the DLC, but I only ever played like one of the DLC plus uh, the free one that they let you pick. Uh, but even then, I remember fondly hanging out at a Barnes and Noble just to be able to get the street past me of the guy who worked there so I could, like, level grind him because he was mad good. Because uh, in uh, Find Me, the more times you street past the same person, the stronger they get. If you ever get, like, a modern 3DS, which is surprisingly easy to do, or an emulator to experience these minigames, definitely should. Then there's Face Raiders, cute little FPS, uses 3DS camera and AR to make monsters, they steal the faces of your friends and gotta rescue them. It's kind of like a precursor to Miitopia, mixed with a little of that one game from the Wii U I can't remember, where it's like you have to find the ghosts that aren't on the TV screen using the gyro. Scott the Waz talked about this. Go watch him. Only when you're done. Don't leave me here. Please. I don't want to be alone. But overall, I'd give them like a combined 4 out of 5. A little biased, just because uh, I fondly remember some of these compared to the ones that I haven't actually played. Uh, all the stuff before the Wii I never got to play as a kid. But uh, who cares? It's my show. The Wii U! Nintendo Land. I don't want to hear any of a Nintendo Land slander. Metroid mode went hard. Zelda mode went hard. Pikmin, it was fine. Now, I personally preferred the co-op and solo stuff because uh, when you have an older brother, competitive multiplayer is always a losing battle. But, uh, you know, Metroid modes versus was fun whenever we had friends over. DK mode went hard. Got me to countless stuff I've never heard of. Everybody begged for Wii Sports on Switch. Uh, give us Nintendo Land 2. It's closest we're ever going to get to a new F-Zero game. This is going to be a little bit of a hot take. Nintendo Land gets a 5. 1, 2, Switch. Okay, let's talk about it. I thought it looked cool, you know, when it first came out. I thought, whoa, HD Rumble with the balls. That's pretty interesting. And I stand by that HD Rumble's interesting technology. But 1, 2, Switch has no depth. You know, it's like if WarioWare had 15 minigames and you pick them individually. So, long story, it's just Family Party 30 Great Games but with only two players, and if it was Family Party, 15 great games. Like, yeah, it shows off the tech, but it also costs $60, so it gets a 1. The PS1. All right, PS1. Didn't have any really impressive games at launch to show off its features. I mean, it had, like, traditional 3D games. But for its launch in Japan, you could play two different kinds of Mahjong, a couple arcade ports, 2D beat-em-up, port of train simulator, sprite-based FPS, and that marble game you played as a kid once. I mean, like, at least the marble game's 3D. Oh, it had Ridge Racer. I mean, I guess that that's there. I mean, given that the original PS1 controller didn't have analog sticks, it was just kind of an SNES controller with thighs, there's not too much more you can expect. I mean, Ridge Racer was, like, fine. It released two years before the M64, so as one of the two 3D games you could grab at launch, it was pretty impressive for the time, especially when the only competition was the aforementioned Marvel game, the 3DO with its one launch title, and the Sega Saturn with 
the same marble game two months earlier. Wait a minute. This console sucks! It doesn't have any unique games or features, and it's only controller's the same as the SNES! Wait. Wait a minute. The dual Shock, Dual Analog Sticks, baby! Ape Escape, that's what we live for! Show the world what Dual Analog Sticks could do, set the stage for Snake vs. Monkey, and scores itself a 5. Meanwhile, Ridge Racer, I mean, it's a 2. I mean, it's better than the Sega Saturn, but like... Eh, not by much. You know, without Ape Escape and DualShock, Sony wouldn't have set the precedent that all controllers for the next generation would follow. Not you. Look, man, I get it. Japanese console launches in this era didn't have, like, the greatest games. At least the American launch had Sonic Adventure. But I'm gonna be real. Sonic Adventure's not even that good, dude. Sonic was always mid. Now, we were fine when Mario 64 played without a second stick. That's because Mario 64 was on the N64. You had a whole generation. Yeah, it's first made 3D Sonic game. Took him too long. Look, I'll, I'll give it a three. That, that'll appease the Sonic fans enough. Then again, their fantasies can never be quenched, can they? And look, man, Dreamcast, you want a better score? Get a better controller. Got him. Got him. Outgamed. Outballed. I sold more copies than you probably. I don't know. You ever see a Dreamcast? That's right, that's what I thought. There is no Dreamcast. It's not real, it's conspiracy. It's just an N64 moving back and forth really fast. At least we got the PS2 and Xbox. I mean, well, not really the PS2. It was kind of just a beefed up PS1. Unlike a lot of Nintendo consoles, PlayStation consoles don't really have gimmicks because they're designed as more hardcore consoles for when you're too serious for Nintendo, not serious enough for a PC. Didn't even have a new controller to show off. They just stuck with the DualShock. I mean... If, it's, if it ain't broke, but like, come on, man. Let's talk about the Xbox. You know, it's got a, a unique controller, but it also has Halo. It's Halo. Yeah. Now, PS3 and 360 were pretty homogenized and didn't really have many launch titles to set themselves apart. At least, that was the case. Until Judgment Day. Connect Adventures. I don't know if this is an incredible tech demo or if it's horrible, because its collection of minigames is literally the same as the minigame collection in every other Kinect game, just with a different skin. So what you get with it is pretty much all the Kinect has, which on one hand, you get the whole package. On the other hand, that's it. That's the whole package. I mean, I guess I'll give it like a, a Schrodinger out of five. It goes really well for showing off what the Kinect can do, but there's also really no reason to buy any connect games after you have it you know it's kind of like the eye toy for ps2 you know let's talk about that the eye toy game okay the eye toy it was like the connect but in the before times it's a connect just the generation early you know eye toy game is an eye toy game it's also the definitive eye toy experience it's basically just connect adventures it gets an eye toy out of five they should have just called it connect game for connect adventures but you know Guess not everyone can be as creative as Sony. PSP had Spider-Man 2, showed how the PSP could do graphics on nearly a level of PS2. Scores 3. Didn't make a splash on the market, but I mean, it was cool, I guess. Vita didn't really have a big tech demo game. It was kind of the PS3 of handhelds. Same kind of applied to the PS4 and Xbox One, but when all seemed lost, it finally happened. Astro's Playroom for PS5, the game that inspired me to make this video. I know it's not the type of game make a huge splash but it's also a pack-in it shows everything the controller and console do from rumble to motion to ray tracing since it's a pack-in even though it didn't redefine gaming i'm still comfortable giving it a five it's really cute really charming and did spring power-ups better than mario galaxy honestly i don't know how to end these scripted videos so uh mario am i right what's the deal with luigi